Hello, everyone can hear me. That's, yeah, that's still you, it's you, Paul. Uh, it's, yeah, I think uh, I shall move on. Ah, that's me. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, yeah, well, it's great to have the opportunity to come and sort of speak to all of you today. Uh, as John said, uh, my passion is mobile. I guess you kind of expect that uh, with me working for Vodafone. Uh, you know, if we, we're not doing it well, no one should really. Um, but yeah, to give you a bit of background again. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, so as John said, I've basically got 18 years SEO experience. So uh, to Zach's point, you know, the wild west of SEO, where it's kind of cra crazy days. Um, and I've been running the program across Vodafone for the last three years. Uh, my role really at Vodafone is to standardize the, uh, the SEO program really across all markets. Uh, and I help a lot with the strategy. So I kind of help them in from a strategic point of view uh, to sort of improve their, their SEO program. Um, we love mobile and we can see that it's growing massively every year. Uh, and every year we get these stats and we're constantly surprised by, by you know, what's, what's happened. So, you know, last year, basically 71% data usage, uh, and it grew again uh, over 2017 by 65%. So we can see from our perspective that users are, are using huge amounts of data. Uh, 4G has, has expanded out massively. Uh, a third of our traffic is coming through video. So we, we can see what's happening from a mobile perspective. And this is really the environment that we're all working in now. Uh, again, I think I sort of this is a slide that I often show people, but we've basically gone past the mobile tipping point. Uh, and this is some of the data that we've had across Vodafone, where we've, uh, we've, you can quite clearly see on the red line, uh, that's mobile traffic, and the blue line is desktop traffic. Uh, since then, we've seen several of our markets uh, go above 65% mobile traffic. And I imagine a lot of you have seen very sort of similar results. So this is kind of the case for mobile. Uh, we've got an increasing amount of mobile traffic. We're spending more and more time on our mobiles. We're literally tethered to our mobiles now. Uh, a recent study in the US showed that we spent about three hours a day on our mobiles. So if you're trying to reach customers, you need to be uh, learning how to deal with this, this mobile environment, and this mobile first environment, specifically. Uh, so yeah, I want to make this quite up to date. It sometimes feels like I'm kind of in a weird kind of uh, uh, groundhog day with mobile, because you know, we, we have all different techniques and things that are changing, and sometimes it feels like not a lot changes. But actually, quite, quite a lot has happened in the last year. Uh, we're getting ready, really, for some very big announcements on mobile first uh, down at Brighton SEO last week. Was anyone here from Brighton SEO? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so Gary's basically said that we're going to get some big announcements in the next couple of weeks on mobile first. Uh, Google's under a lot of pressure at the moment to push their mobile first index out. Uh, so they've been trying to do this. Obviously, they've had a lot of problems with relevancy, I would guess, because this is, this is quite a major change for their index. Uh, so I think they've been kind of pulling back this, this, uh, this timeline. And you can see a lot of the work they're doing at the moment is, as he said, kind of dealing with legacy site issues. So what do you do if you have an MDOT uh, structure for your website? You know, how can they deal with that in a, in a mobile-first index? Uh, but what he said in general, in terms of prepping, and uh, if, if you wanted my kind of educated guess, I would say that we're going to see something happen for after Christmas. Google, Google doesn't like making big releases before Christmas. Uh, ever since sort of 2004 and then the you know, Florida update, that was, that was pretty horrific. Uh, they tend to leave these big updates till after Christmas. But I imagine we're going to hear some news in the next couple of weeks that's going to give us, uh, give us a bit more insight on this. Um, but they basically come out and they said, if you have a responsive website, you'll be OK. So that's the message at the moment for the mobile index. How many people here have a responsive website? OK, so that's, that's a good number. Who, who doesn't have a responsive website? Oh, <laughs> you've got a lot of work to do. Yeah? No. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Oh, that's very good. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're, in, we're in a good place. You're going to be OK. Uh, now, that's not really good enough for me. I don't want you just to be OK. I want you to really sort of thrive and excel in this environment. So I'm going to go a bit further than this and explain what you can do to do better than just doing OK. So the first thing is, is let's cover the, the basics. You know, what is mobile friendly or, well, Basically, mobile first, aka mobile friendly. That's uh, getting your responsive web design down, uh, unblocking your JavaScript, unblocking your CSS. That's so Google can see all of your files and they can work out exactly what you're up to. Uh, and it's performance. It's making sure that your pages are loading very fast. Uh, you've got a very fast load speed. Uh, and it's thinking mobile first. It's getting your developers to think about the mobile journey as the primary journey for your users. So that, that's a slightly different thing from being uh, well, I, I think that goes a lot further than being mobile friendly, 
because mobile friendly is about just the well, we're, we're, make, you know, we're providing an environment for our mobile users. That's different. Mobile first is saying this is our primary journey. This is a main journey for our users. Uh, how does our navigation kind of uh, start on a mobile site, and how does it extend to the desktop site? But primarily, mobile is, is the one journey. So how can you kind of think mobile first? So if we covered these, then it comes down to technical SEO. Uh, and, the, and the pillars of technical SEO are site architecture. You have to get this one covered. If you've got big problems with your site architecture at the moment, you need to get these covered off before Christmas. Uh, I've got several of, of my markets that have sort of legacy, legacy issues across CMSs, and, and I'm trying to get these things fixed very quickly over the next few months. Uh, the reason for this is you don't want to be making these kind of major updates all at the same time. So you don't want to do a big redesign and an HTTPS migration and deal with mobile first all at the same time. So you need to get these things done in, in an order. Uh, because if you do them at the same time, you're just going to get very confused by the signals that you get back. So HTTPS, uh, we're going to cover that in one of the sessions coming up. You need to be HTTPS. How many people here have the site working on HTTPS? OK, who doesn't? Okay. That's, pretty, that's pretty good, yeah. Uh, so HTTPS is, is an absolute precondition uh, for a lot of things. I mean, as, as you know, if you've migrated, you need that because you're going to get warnings in Chrome at the moment. Uh, but it's also a precondition for things like HTTP2, uh, push notifications. A lot of the, the goodies that we're getting out of mobile are all based on the fact that we're HTTPS. So that's, that's kind of a precondition. Um, site maps and shopping feeds, they need to be working. Uh, you need to do anything you can to kind of make sure you haven't got legacy issues with these. Uh, and fixing crawling errors. So there's a lot of very good tools. We talk about deep crawl. Uh, there's a lot of good tools out there to help you crawl your sites, work out if you've got legacy uh, cr uh, crawling errors that you need to fix. Uh, and again, like I say, get these, get these done pretty much before Christmas if you can, would be my advice. Um, and then, if you've done all of that, we can get onto the opportunities. Uh, which is the more exciting bit. Uh, Google wants us to move to a mobile index. So Google operates with a carrot and stick approach, and they want to reward you for doing what they, what they want. So that's, that's kind of the mode that Google's in. So once you understand that, then you'll see that there's going to be a lot of opportunities that come up over the next few months that you can take advantage of to get a competitive advantage on, 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 on your competitors. Yeah. Um, the first one, uh, HTTP2. Uh, all of you people who've moved to HTTPS, you now have the opportunity to upgrade your HTTP. Uh, the last time that an update came out for HTTP, HTTP 1.1, was 1999. So we haven't had an update for quite a while. Uh, HTTP 2 came out in uh, 2015. So that's been fully tested. It's available. Have a word with your server guys. Give you a significant performance increase. Uh, the next one is AMP. Uh, I kind of have, who, who here is using AMP? One, not, not many of you. Yeah. Uh, AMP stands for Accelerated Mobile Pages. Uh, this is an initiative that Google's uh, got behind because it allows you to add some uh, JavaScript to your page, do a custom CSS sheet, and you produce a very lightweight uh, mobile page. So this is kind of Google giving you a very quick mobile advantage. And the reason they're doing this is because they know that it's very hard for a lot of websites to do the kind of performance work that you get at enterprise level. So if you're using WordPress, you're talking about a single plugin to get this working. Very, very easy work. Um, AMP doesn't look particularly good. It is developing all the time. And I'm not the biggest uh, sort of supporter of AMP because I, I believe in having a sort of wider, more mature kind of performance program that's running. But there are advantages, and I realize that the, it's worth it for the advantages that you get. If you have AMP pages, you're going to get uh, more exposure in the results. So you're going to get an increase in traffic, simple as that. So, so think about performance, think about HTTP2, think about uh, acceleration in, in those other areas, but then also take the quick wins if they're available. Um, also, a lot of these opportunities are changing on a weekly basis, which is quite interesting. So we only heard just recently that, that AMP pages are actually going to be the first pages indexed in the mobile first change. So you're going to get first mover advantage. Uh, we also know that AMP pages are going to be used in featured snippets that I'll talk about in a minute. So Google is just constantly playing around with these things. So you know, get, get, make sure that you've actually got them developed, you've got, you've got an idea of how, how to get them started, and that you're, you're getting these advantages. 
Uh, incidentally, I mean, this is some data that we had from Vodafone in terms of our usage of AMP, which I thought you might find quite interesting. Uh, we did this on, well, we tested quite a few pages, but this is one particular iPhone 5 page, and we found that the rankings actually went up significantly for the AMP pages. And I don't think that AMP is a ranking boost in itself. It's not a ranking signal, but speed is. So if we're thinking about user experience, we're thinking about speed, these, these can come into the mobile first index. Uh, I can take a picture. I mean, ultimately, we had a, an average sort of 27% increase in traffic uh, for that. 18% 18 increase in conversions, 12% uh, drop in abandonment, which seems to be fairly common with AMP. So I, I would recommend it at the moment. It's something you look at. Uh, secondly, uh, position zero. And, this kind of, uh, and these opportunities all have something in common, and you begin to see the link between all these opportunities. They're all about changing your website content into data, making it, uh, turning it into a form that's more accessible for Google to use. Uh, and this is a common theme for, for, for all of the mobile first and all the, uh, everything that's happening in this area. Featured snippets is another one that, that people are getting very excited about. Uh, they're calling these uh, position zero because this box will come above all the, uh, all the existing listings. And of course, it's linking through to your website. So Google is finding ways of taking the data off your pages and putting it into a more accessible format. Uh, and obviously, Google wants to use this format for, for example, uh, voice search, because in voice search, there's only one answer. So if it has enough featured snippets, it's going to use that data to then port into uh, another device, another system. And that's how mobile first is working. If, if you reduce everything to data, reduce everything to data streams, then we can see where the interactions happen. Uh, and the other one is, is linked data, JSON. Uh, this, is, uh, this, again, is something that's working really well. And the common uh, denominator of this is, again, taking our, our content and turning it into data for Google so that we can use it in different ways. So as Vodafone, my, my sort of goal would be to have my bill paying or uh, uh, customer's account details in data format so that I could take that into uh, uh, Alexa. Because I'd like you to kind of get up, turn, turn to Alexa and get a, an upgrade on your phone. So mobile first isn't so much even about mobile. It, it's more about data portability. And it's about how we can change the standards that we're working on the web to make it more accessible in many other formats. So don't get too kind of hung up on the whole kind of mobile idea. This, this, is, uh, this kind of revolution that's happening will be uh, as applicable to the screen that we have set up in your car, uh, the, the screen that you have in your, on your fridge. This is the same revolution that's happening. It's the ability to take your data and port it into different environments. Uh, and if you can get it into data format, Google will reward you for that. Uh, and I know a lot of people here are kind of worried about that. And traditionally, kind of SEOs have always been worried about giving too much data to Google. Because if, if we do that, uh, where do we sit in that equation? If we give all of our content to Google, uh, Google just cuts us out and presents the data to, to the user. Uh, and, and that's a, you know, it's a good fear. It's a, it's a reasonable uh, worry that we should have. But this is something that's happening. We can see the change in devices. We can see the change in usage. You know, we've got to go along with Google for this ride. Uh, it doesn't mean we'll do it blindly. Because, uh, for example, we know now that you would be better for featured snippets to be in position one or two than to be the featured snippet. Uh, we know that in terms of click-through rate. So there may be times where we will de-optimize because we want to increase our click-through rate with Google. But you know, this, is, this, is, uh, this is happening, and we have to go along with this ride. Uh, there are various ways of doing, uh, adding uh, JSON to your site. Uh, if you're not incredibly geeky, uh, then you've got the data highlighter in Google Search Console that allows you to kind of get your head around it. Uh, and also Google My Business has been referenced uh, elsewhere. So getting that data up to date. Uh, I often use, well, I'm a big proponent of using uh, Google Tag Manager for handling my, my uh, data because it means I'm not involving the developers in any way. You can literally set up a, a Google Tag Manager account and then you can use HTML containers to add this JSON code. You don't need any, any dev time at all. And the JSON code can literally be copied from schema.org. It, uh, it's, it's not a very techy job. Uh, it only starts to get a bit more techy when you, you, you sort of react with it dynamically. 
Uh, but certainly on a simple level, it's, it's not hard. Um, so this is how we're doing. We're kind of taking this data. We're finding different ways to present this data to Google. And we're getting advantages from, from having our content in data format. Uh, ultimately, this is why we're, we're talking now about decoupled CMSs or headless CMSs. Has everyone, anyone heard that term? Oh, I'm kind of out there now. OK. <laughs> I'm entering the deep geek. All right. This is uh, we're starting to develop CMSs that handle data. They only handle data. So you'll, you'll have a database, you'll have uh, administration panels, and then you will interact with that data via APIs into different front ends. So we'll have an entire system that just handles your content as data and then ports that to other places. Uh, and that may be then ported into a WordPress website. It may be, in the case of my Vodafone, we're porting that into uh, the my Vodafone native apps. So my Vodafone native app is made up entirely of API data. Uh, and also with uh, Deepcrawl, it's very interesting that they've also followed this methodology. So the entire uh, functionality of Deepcrawl is based on APIs. So if you wanted to, if you had your own website, you could just interact with their API and you could pull all of their content into your website. See, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of where development is going. Uh, that, that's presenting, I and mean, that, that kind of makes sense when you see that this evolution this mobile first evolution, you can see this, this is where it's heading to. So how can we kind of deal with our content as data? So we can mark it up on our pages, we can use systems like AMP, we can start to develop shopping feeds, we can start to develop JSON coding, we can start to develop databases that handle our content. This is, this is the ultimate end. Uh, and there'll be a lot of quick wins along the way uh, to, to Paul's point, I mean, this is a godsend for SEO, because I would have taken all my content into data format, and I can be producing calculators. I can be running that through databases to, to, uh, to, to produce SEO content. Uh, I can be interacting with other businesses. Uh, I, can, I can be someone who sells flowers, and I use my data to interact with uh, another company that celebrates dates or birthdays or events. So this, this is kind of the future of the web. This is where it's heading. And this, this is mobile first. So yeah, just to kind of summarize, and I'll sort of take some questions. You have very limited time to get your house in order from an SEO point of view. Like I say, I would, I would estimate, really, you've got to do this by Christmas. Uh, we'll, we'll see what Gary says in the next couple of weeks, but that, that really wouldn't surprise me. They're under intense pressure from people like Facebook. Uh, studies in the US are showing that out, out of all the time that people spend uh, various activities online, 10% uh, is on various websites, 17% of that time is on Facebook. You know, this is, uh, fa Facebook is absolutely dominating the mobile uh, race at the moment, the arms race. So Google is under intense pressure to get this right very, very quickly. So, so expect this to happen soon. Um, take advantage of these quick wins. So AMP. JSON, LD, HTTP2, these are quick wins, and Google will reward you for them. And then longer term, you really have to start thinking about your content as data. And this, is, this is really the key point I want you to go away with. How can I change my content into data in ways that I can use it, in ways that I can interact with other businesses, other people, other services in the future? Okay. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, fella. Right, I've got some questions. Ooh. iPad questions. Oh, the question over there as well. We're going to start with the iPad. Um, I don't know whose site this is, but it's going to put you on the spot, mate. All right. If you've got a 100 million URL e com site on yeah. HTTP, no sitemaps and non responsive, little human resource, what do you <laughs> fix first? <laughs> this, this sounds like every market. In, in, sounds in like I just want to screaming at like the room personally or something that, like that yeah. one. You're certainly not going to do that by Christmas, by the way, whoever that yeah, was. That's so, not going to happen um, by Christmas. Um, it's tricky. I mean, you, you have to get to mobile friendly level because that, that's what Google is saying is OK, AKA you're not going to get damaged by it. So that, that's what we're, if you're looking at damage limitation right. as being your benchmark, then you have to get to, to mobile friendly level. And I'd say that is. Uh, you have to do your HTTPS migration because you don't want those warnings in Chrome because those warnings in Chrome saying not secure are basically frightening away your, your customers. 
So that, that has to be an essential now. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I'd, I'd like to say just start getting crawl issues. Start fixing what you can on, on the crawl issues. Start crawling now, because 100 million yeah. pages on a crawl is quite a long consum consumption of time to actually just crawl a site that big as well. So, uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's interesting, the small things. I mean, in terms of fixing architecture, uh, for, for one of our markets, we just fixed broken links. Uh, we fixed about 20,000 broken links. Yeah. And we, we had a, a, a massive jump in visibility. For it. So, so it's, Google is re really rewarding technical SEO right now, and, and I quite like that because I've, I've worked all sides of the SEO equations. I've worked content, I've worked technical, and, and Google is really kind of very much encouraging us to get the technical SEO right at the moment. 100%. It's right back in the techies box now, which is great. Mm. Great for me. I love I love the technical side as well. So it's um, it's great to see that. Um, so just the second one on here. Will it will it favour AMP even if your pages are uh, competitively fast and user friendly? So we move to yeah, will it favour AMP? So when yes. we move to mobile first, mm. is it going to favour AMP even if obviously your legacy pages that are on the desktop side are, yes. are yeah. still fast? A absolutely. And this yeah. is what's inherently unfair about AMP. Uh, yeah. It shouldn't do that. And, and I think a lot of us who are involved in performance, uh, we, we've, we've spent a lot of time uh, working with service workers, so a lot of very intricate work mm. on the performance level. And even when you go to, to HTTP2, you know, you, you're, you're thinking about, you know, <laughs> You're taking out your concatenation, sorting out a lot of these kind of performance issues. But it's, it's, it's unfair that Google is rewarding their system AMP, but that's the way that Google works. So uh, while you can have two pages, one can be working with AMP, one of them can be just naturally optimized. They can both be performing at the same level. Uh, Google will give AMP preferential uh, visibility. Mm. So they will show AMP in different places, and they're experimenting with AMP pages in the, in the carousel. They're experimenting with AMP pages in the featured snippets. Yeah. You, you are going to get more visibility for AMP. Yeah. I think to add to that as well is a lot of people just kind of think of AMP as like news, you know, publishers yeah. using it. They'll actually just get news into, into Google really quick. Google's been doing some testing recently where they're actually letting you transact via AMP. So there's actually e-commerce via AMP pages now as well. So if you guys are retailers, you can actually win very quickly in AMP and actually do transactional stuff via Google um, Pay. Android on, uh, on AMP as well now. So. Absolutely, John. I mean, AMP will cover every single type of web page, website, eventually. Yeah, definitely. So that note, on, uh, from a tracking point of view, how easy is it to integrate AMP tracking with GA? Uh, yeah, no, we, um, yeah, quite tricky at the moment. We, we've, uh, yeah, had some fun <laughs> with that. Um, and, and hence, I'm just reading the questions, mate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hence why I've given you data there from uh, uh, Google Search Console. So we've been using Google Search Console to, to measure. Um, it, it's, it's very different. With AMP as well, we, we have had some trouble measurement, uh, measuring that. And as we do a lot of stuff with, with Telium, for example, we've then found that because, uh, because AMP only lets you use a certain uh, partners, so they won't include all these different various JavaScripts in an AMP page, because that's, that's what makes it work at the speed it does. So there's a lot of services out there that don't work in AMP, uh, and Telium is one of those. Mm. So we've had a lot of trouble uh, doing our own measurement because Telium's not, not working in that environment. Telium is a, is a tag management system. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think, I think if, you, if you've got a GA stack, you, I think you're OK with If you've got a GA AMP. stack, it runs full AMP yeah, for the GA that's stack. Fine. Yeah. But you just, if, if you're not going full Google, like you know, yeah. we're, we're Adobe, Telium, yeah. then you're going to find there's a few problems. Yeah. Any quick questions out there in the audience? I did see a hand out the front, yeah. One quick one there. Yeah. Oh, there was. Uh, if, if you go to that link uh, that's there, uh, Stat uh, Rob basically loves featured snippets, so he investigates them on, on a regular basis, uh, and he's been looking at uh, click-through rates on featured snippets, and he's sort of finding that uh, obviously position one, nor in the normal search results, you'd expect to be about 37% click-through rate. Uh, so in the featured snippet, you're looking at low 20s, basically. Uh, but uh, because it answers a question. So it, it answers a question, so a lot of people then don't click through, and that's kind of what Google wanted. So you're in this position where you kind of go along with it because it will get you additional traffic if you're low down the, on the page. And, and also, when it comes to feature snippets, it'll, usually it'll pick one person from the, from, from the first page. You're very unlikely to get the feature snippet position if you're page two or three. Uh, unless Google's kind of experimenting mm. a bit. So, so you, you, if, you're in, if you're at the bottom of the page, then feature snippet is, is a godsend. If you're first or second position, you, you're going to think a bit more carefully about it. Mm. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it, we kind of have this assumption that one page gets found for one feature snippet. And, and, that, uh, and we look, if, again, at that study uh, Rob's done. You, you see some of the, the 
top pages for featured snippets can be found for thousands of featured snippets. So you can have one page that's found for you know, two and a half thousand featured snippets. So it's going to be very hard to de-optimize at that kind of granular level. OK, one final question, which I've just got on here. Simple yes or no? Can I be confident that Google will crawl HTTP2? Yes. There you go. Yeah. Job done. Yeah. Simple as. Yeah. Right, coffee break. Um, big thank you to Nick. Cheers. Cheers.